everyone, I'm Rachel Poli with Ari Meglin, and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. We're on episode 52, and this week's question is, how do you create character profiles? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. And if you enjoy this episode, please give it a like. So what are character profiles? They're, I mean, I really don't know how to explain this. It's a profile that you create for your characters so that when you're writing your book, you know everything that you need to know about your character. And th- this can be an extensive profile, or it could just be notes about your character, just the way they look, the way they act, a little bit about their personality, and other little fun facts. And the whole point of it is to, to help you develop your character. So the way that I typically create my character profiles is that I take a look at what others have done. You can Google character profiles and a ton of things will appear with character trait lists and a whole lot more. And you can get many ideas of what to include in your character profile. And I always find that helps because otherwise I will sit there forever trying to figure out what information I need to know about my character. So if I Google character profiles and I see templates of what other people have done, name, age, birthday, gender, um, favorite food, favorite color, whatever, I can, you know, just plug in my own information for my characters and then I can move on with writing my book. And I normally do this um, like during my outlining process because... I I try to have a decent idea of my characters before going into writing the book. Whether that gets followed or not is a totally different story. Um, But you can create your character profiles whenever you want, but I find it helpful to just like Google it, fill in the information and move on. I'm gonna go, no, I don't do that. (laughs) Totally different. Of course. No, I I think that's great because it's weird, especially if you're a new writer, it can be a bit daunting about what sort of thing you want to say for your character. And and it's like anything, everything just goes out your head. I'm going to create a character and it's like, poof, and suddenly you can't think of anything. Um, So yeah, I think templates are great. What I've done is I've been writing for so many years. I did the same thing, got got some templates. And then over the time, I have tweaked them and perfected them for my character profiles. So what I have now is I have my overall base template, which I use for every story. And that's like your basic information. You know, everyone's got eyes. Everyone's got hair. Well, mostly, (laughs) I should say. You know, everyone's got skin. So I'll have a template that is specific to every story. That's totally fine. And then what I'll do is I will have sections that I slot in depending on what I'm writing. For example, if I am writing a fantasy, especially a traditional fantasy, and I have and I made details for a magical hierarchy, obviously that is not needed in a contemporary romance or a historical fiction. So I have these sections. And although I do mostly write fantasy, I, I write both traditional fantasy and urban fantasy. And you will find there are different things from that. In your more traditional fantasy, you're often dealing with very elaborate worlds, you know, different concepts and everything. Whereas some urban fantasy is based in like the real world, which is what uh, my Dark Heart series is. In which case, I don't need details about the town this person lived in and the type of transport because they'll live in this specific town or city and they probably have buses and cabs and things. Whereas, you know, maybe on the fantasy side, the traditional fantasy, maybe they're all riding glopnogs. Don't know what that is, but I'm sure I'll figure that out later. But, you know, so it's very different. So I do try... (laughs) I do try and have um, specific template sections to build up each profile, depending on the type of story I write, just so that I'm covering all bases. That's what I like to do. I like that, the whole do-it-yourself template. Um, I have done that as well. Like there have been times where I've Googled character profile templates, and then I take little bits and pieces from different templates, what I like and what works for my stories. And then I kind of end up creating my own template which of course these templates are different for every book or every genre, depending on what you write. And it's true, you need to 
if you have a fantasy novel, you're obviously going, you may have magical elements, whereas you wouldn't have that in a contemporary romance, as you said. So that actually kind of, you know, works into my next point is that when creating a character profile, you need to write down what matters. A lot of character profiles show a character's age and birthday. Age is important, as you usually need to know the protagonist's age as you read, but their birthday might not be needed. If they gain superpowers, for an, for example, at the age of 16, then knowing their birthday may not be a bad detail to add. For example, a December birthday is going to have different weather than an August birthday, depending on where your character is from or what world they're living in. If a birthday is a significant part of the story, then included. Otherwise, you may be able to get away with leaving that detail out. Of course, I normally include something like a birthday in my character profiles because I like knowing that information. <laughs> so you can <laughs> write it down, but you need to make sure that you're only including the details that matter in the actual book. Yeah, I think that that is definitely important. I, I know exactly what you mean because when I was younger, I used to create really excessively detailed profiles. I'm talking pages and pages. And I felt it was important. Every little tiny minutiae of data had to be in that. We needed every little thing. Um, no, we didn't. I didn't. I mean, part of the part of the reason for character profile is to help you with consistency. If you tell me that your character is left-handed, they better be picking things up with their left hand. If they get injured in that left hand, they better struggle with their right. I don't want them like swinging about unless you've told me that they're ambidextrous or that that comes in later that actually they, they trained with both. That sort of thing is important, but you've, you've got to be careful not to have so much. And I think nowadays I've, I've seen a lot of profiles that have started to be that, you know, you're talking 10, 15 pages and it's got like everything. And Rachel's right, it's, you've really got to pick what's important. You know, do we need to know this person is allergic to strawberries? If it comes up and it's a foreshadowing, it's important. If they never eat strawberries, if nobody ever feeds them strawberries, if they have no allergic reaction, we don't need to know they're allergic to strawberries. Doesn't do anything. Seriously, stop telling us crap we don't need. I digress. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think you start out with the basics and flesh up the character, flesh up, <laughs> flesh out the character. And I'm like you, I will create my template early, but I leave it a little bit fluid because I will sometimes go, oh yeah, I'm gonna add that scar because remember that they were supposed to get injured on this time. So they're gonna need a scar there. Or, ah, actually they do, we do need to know what handedness they are because this is gonna come up. And it might've been something I didn't think of earlier but I add it in as I go through the story, mainly because I write series or trilogies and I need to remember that for the next book or two, because otherwise I'm going to forget, you know? So yeah, definitely, definitely don't overdo it with your, with your templates, especially if you're a new writer. I know it gets really excitable to just add every little thing, but we, we don't need that. We really don't. And if you do end up overdoing it, you're going to spend hours and hours on your character profiles and then you'll never get any actual writing done trust me I've been there <laughs> because I used to be that person that would have 10 15 pages of character profiles <laughs> I actually would print them out and I would handwrite in the information and I had folders with them all it yeah it was it was a project thing is how often did you check those folders oh never <laughs> Exactly. I had the same. I had a binder full and it's like never pulled it out ever because <laughs> too big, too much information. So alternatively, going into my next point, you can have character profiles, but you can also write things down as you go along. So you can create your character profiles while you're actually writing the book. I've gotten to the point where I don't really create character profiles all that much anymore. I just let the characters write themselves and see how their personality grows in certain situations. And I usually have a general idea of how they they look, but that typically changes in the writing as well because they don't listen to me. So I just <laughs> I just kind of roll with it at this point. I mean, when when I first started writing, I extensively outlined and did these character profiles and then they always got tossed out the window. So now I've gotten to the point where I've accepted the fact that I am not in charge. 
and I just let them do their thing. And I'll, I'll make notes of it as I go along. <laughs> I, I can appreciate that. I can. And I agree. You don't need to have all the profiles written at the very start. I, I think it is better to let your characters grow as you write and then add things in. And also a good thing about character profiles is it does allow you to notice um, trends. And I did not realize just how much I, I must have a thing for um, pale skinned, long, dark haired males. But apparently, <laughs> which it shouldn't be a surprise because I am literally, my partner is um, dark Irish. So he's got that really pale, pale skin and his hair is long and it is dark. It's like, like virgin on black. So I'm not really shocked at the same time, but I didn't realize it translated that much into my stories until I was like oh this is like the fourth um male protagonist I've written <laughs> who has the same long black hair hey I've got to stop doing that so like you know I'm trying to shut because it's short to change <laughs> it's like <laughs> add a bit of a tan something you know but yeah and and, and like um, very blue eyes that was the, <laughs> I've had to try and remember to to maybe give them brown eyes or green eyes but so yeah that's that's another point I actually, most of my characters have red hair. <laughs> now that you, <laughs> it's when you start. I mean, I had some pictures made of some of my characters. Um, I did the. I have um, three of my uh, female protagonists, and the artwork was beautiful. And I was going to get the male protagonist, and then I realised when I was writing the description, I'm like, they're pretty similar. <laughs> this, poor, this poor artist is going to have to take the image in my head, which is not easy. I mean, you can you can discuss um her and eyes and like high cheekbones and like cleft chin or whatever but there's more to the image in your head and honestly the look at the you know the hair the eyes the cheek wow they're all so similar it's going to be three of the same picture so so i had to kind of pull back and, and think a bit more, <laughs> more detail which is why i said build it slowly acknowledge that you might be throwing in your own preferences constantly gotta keep an eye on that I mean, I realized that most of my males, um, male characters in, in general had no blondes because I've never been a big blonde fan. No offense to anyone who's blonde. It's just not just not my thing, the blonde. And then I realized that, yeah, but there's got to be at least somebody in there. Somebody is going to naturally have blonde hair or even dyed blonde. And then I had to start like reminding myself, no, they can't all have dark hair. They can't all have long hair. Try and mix it up a bit. <laughs> But anyway, um, one of the things I do want to suggest is quick guide. Um, what I, start again. I wrote an epic fantasy um, story. It's my Belmort series and it is currently sitting at 220,000 words and it is not finished and it's collecting oh. dust in my closet. Oh yeah, seriously. <laughs> it was just, I've still got another like quarter of a book to write and it was just like, this is massive. Um, and I had my, my profiles for that story nailed down, all the details, everything needed. However, I did create a quick guide using an Excel spreadsheet. And that literally held the most basic information, quick and easy to get to. Eye color, hair color, and style scars, handness, homeland, skin color, gender, names of their horses, things that came up a lot. And that was because I had several groups of characters for like five chapters. And um, so that'd be like group A. And then it'd end on a cliffhanger. And then we'd switch to another group of characters, group B, and we'd go through several chapters. And then they'd hang, hit a cliffhanger and then we'd flip back to group A. So you're talking about like 12 main characters. And because of that, we spent a lot of time with all of these. And I had to remember whose weapon, <laughs> that sounds really weird enough. I had to remember what such and such about his weapon of choice was what such and such about his horse was called because their horses were important, it came into it. You know, what this person looked like. And because I would get five chapters in and couldn't remember what I'd written, what they looked like, it'd be like, oh. And I didn't want to have to keep pulling out the heavier detail for something so small. So I created my little spreadsheet. And if I was really struggling, um, especially if I had like multicolored hair, say one of them had, you know, green and blue. And I couldn't remember if it was green and blue or green and red because sometimes you'd forget. At least I could go to the spreadsheet, do a search, and add it in. And I wasn't going, oh, where's my, my longer detailed profile? 
So yeah, a quick guide does help. I suppose you could put the whole thing on a spreadsheet and make it massive, but it didn't really work for me. I prefer just a quick guide and then everything else in, you know, paper. Well, you know, that's kind of the thing is that when you create a character profile, you're not going to create the perfect character profile the first time. Like it yeah. might work out better if you create a template in Word document and print it out and handwrite it in like I used to do, or you can just have an Excel spreadsheet like that and just plug in information as you go along, or you can plan it out. Like, I mean, it's going to take some time to figure out what what works for you when it comes to conveying the information in the like best possible way for you to remember it. But I like that. Don't underestimate profiles. I have seen um, authors who've done really well and they've brought out a series or whatever. And then they have built on that by creating like a character book. And it's literally information and maybe backstory about certain characters and they've almost like put their profiles in there so it can be useful having a profile and not going too crazy with it and having extra detail that might not always be in the book but again this is this was more for creating almost like another like a companion book almost um to for people who are big fans of the series where they could get it and they've got all the extra detail and everything so that can be quite useful so you know profiles all don't have to just be i've gotten them for my character and then that book's finished and i trash them it's like you might be able to you know do something extra with it make it as a bonus um make it as bonus content for awesome fans of yours by saying do you want to see the profiles the actual detailed profiles and put it in a little book send it out free with your newsletter i don't know but there's other things you can use it for think about that that's a really good idea even if it's like just a short story or even like build a novella with it or something and yeah. alternatively you can use that as a character profile you don't even need to like have a template for your character just sit down and create a short story or novella with that specific character let them write themselves and see what useful information you could pull out of it yeah, that's a good and idea. That's, good. That, that's a good way to get to know that character so that when you write the main book, you already know them well enough that hopefully it'll be more simple to <laughs> write the book. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that point makes me think of something else. By putting them in a story, that actually gives them a lot more flavor, if you will to their personality, their reactions, because the problem with some character profiles, and no, sorry, the problem with people who create character profiles and sort of see this as a, this is my character, they miss the concept of a character's development. You know, there's all, my character has a weaknesses against snakes. It's like, okay, that's fine. But maybe by book five, they've overcome that. And that's not part of their character anymore. So, it should never be too rigid because your characters should be developing and, you know, adapting and changing. Maybe they become more of an arsehole. Maybe they become a much better person. Who knows? But, you know, they shouldn't be so rigid that they're trapped within your profile and they don't change ever. That's, that's true because we change all the time as well. And so do your characters. It's the whole point of character development. <laughs> Okay, so with that said, I think we've covered what we can in this episode. So if you guys create character profiles, you know, you can look at, take a look at what others have done. You can create your own template. Uh, just be sure you don't overdo it and you write down what matters. And also you can write things as you go along and build your guide slowly. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Do let us know if you create character profiles and how you go about creating them in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag The Merry Writer Podcast. If you want to get some extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash The Merry Writer Podcast. You can support our show and for as little as $1 a month, you can get bonus content, including mini episodes. So tune in next week for another episode of the Merry Writer podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Scraps of Paper. We have notes everywhere. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0. 